Hi guys, welcome to another video. <laughs> I wasn't going to do a video for a couple of weeks because we've got a lot of busy stuff going on at work, but I just, I don't know, when I posted that on the community tab in YouTube, I was like, I felt like someone had taken some it away from me, so I had to sneak down here on my lunchtime because um, I really wanted to give you a bit of an update as to where we are on the allotment plot and as you can see I'm wearing my hoodie now it's gone a little bit nippy it's still quite warm but you can definitely tell can't you that we're moving into autumn now see these dwarf French beans that are planted really late and I didn't think anything was going to come of them they are starting to flower a little bit now but the jury's out as to whether we're really going to get anything off these because if the weather goes a bit cooler I do fear they might um, come to a halt. It's the mighty Enorma that are still standing. I guess this is a job. Have to come down and spend. Probably can take quite a while to take these beans down, I think. And yeah, they're. Well, they're not a patch on what they looked like a couple of months ago. But there's still one or two beans on here, but I think I'm going to leave them on. People have been commenting on the videos about how you can leave the beans on or perhaps even take them off, but store them until they go solid and then use the beans next year. So I'm definitely going to do that with the enormous. I will still buy some beans, but it'd be interesting to mix them in with some beans that I've saved this year. Just see what happens. These, to be fair, are looking way healthier and there's still some... Well, I say still, there's some nice beans coming through on these Scarlet Emperors. These are looking way healthier than the Enormas, but the, the Kentucky Wonder Wax have taken a bit of a battering in the high winds that we've had over the past few days. I am still getting beans off them, but I don't know how long for. Do you think that's a cane snapped? No, it hasn't snapped, but it's definitely... Oh, I don't know. I tell you, times you come down the plot this time of year and you do get that sinking feeling, don't you, that things are things are changing, aren't they? You've got to roll with it, haven't you? Look at these. Oh, these are... Everything is just taking a battering. Don't tell me my bench. Have me bench. Masters. Oh, everything's... Everything's... Everything's flopping around all over the place. In summary, with these beans, I know I talk about them a lot on my videos, but I've noticed that once they start producing, they're definitely not producing as much as if I'd have grown them earlier in the year, if that makes sense. Um, because it is a little bit cooler now. It is going cooler at night as well. And you can tell that they don't produce as much when the temperatures drop down a bit. So not that it's a bad thing, but I guess, I don't know, if you want to maximise the space in your allotment plot, maybe growing them earlier is a, probably a better approach because you're going to get more beans off the plants. I'm still pleased with them but yeah you can definitely tell the difference between growing something later on in the season than sort of kicking them off in springtime. Carrots are going okay. Let me show you. Not sure how long to keep them in the ground for. They're definitely going to stay longer than what they are but yeah they seem to be growing okay. I tell you where I'm having a lot of luck is these cabbages that are planted in these beds. Check these out. Look in here, look. I'll take the bed off. Look. Look at those. They look mega healthy, don't they? And they're purple ball cabbage. And I planted, well, I planted them from seed. I started them off from seed in. August time and they're doing really well out here under this makeshift frame to protect them and here's my white ball cabbage lift these up and show you and these are doing pretty well as well they are getting slightly eaten but I don't know they're at a point now where I think they're gonna they're gonna do okay treading on untrodden 
ground if you like with these cabbages I've never grown cabbages before and to be honest with you I've never really successfully attempted to grow anything through this sort of autumn winter periods this is all completely new to me you do have to cover things over these winter things that you that you're growing so they don't get eaten by pigeons and stuff it's definitely a, a tricky game to try and keep things alive because everything seems to want to get at these cabbages and I've had it in my sprout plants as well take a look at these moved some sprout plants into my greenhouse which is an interesting move but I've left two here and look these are getting nibbled out as well but again they're, they're getting quite big um, in terms you know I feel like they're at a point now where they will survive unlike this one here everything's trying to get out stuff <laughs> but they're not getting at my beetroot check these out and these over the past I'd say three or four days have suddenly shot up and look at look at the size of these I think these are going to be ready around about mid to end October I'll have to check my notes but long exhibition beetroot these are I don't even like beetroot but just thought I'd grow some for the fun of it because I had some space check out the callaloo so the callaloo was supposed to be ready to harvest at the end of September but I don't think it is I don't think it's anywhere near big enough so I'm going to leave it in until probably mid October now and um, this one particularly is doing nice doesn't seem to get eaten much either this callaloo things are nibbling at it but maybe the pests don't really like callaloo which is good so it's a sturdy crop that is. I'm looking forward to to harvesting those and seeing what it tastes like because ain't got a clue come and check me turnips out come on hey uh, these are loved aren't they boy different pests but because they're kind of in the ground I'm hoping I think it's some turnips off them. In here, this one here is doing particularly well. Purple Milan variety this is. I've been reading up about turnips, only a little bit because not the most of interesting vegetable, but apparently they're really easy to grow and they grow really fast, but I've tried numerous occasions to get a plentiful harvest of turnips if you like i just haven't had much luck with them at all i don't know what else am i going to show you while i'm here i'll tell you what i'll do um i have made some huge change oh the green room walk straight past the green room there heading towards the polytunnel you'll have to you'll have to wait towards the end of the video for the polytunnel so stick around for that but yeah look what i've got inside the green room now now i've planted a load of kale in here curly kale and we've got some what's that other kale black magic i think it's black magic i've put in there and i've popped in some of those purple cabbages just at the front there they seem to be getting nibbled at and things are getting nibbled in this green room i'm not gonna lie things seem to be doing way better in that sort of frame there I don't know whether that's because it's got the green netting all the way round. Maybe something to consider putting that type of netting all the way around this green room. That's something to think about, isn't it? And I don't know whether any of you guys are sort of setting up for planting anything in the winter. I feel like I'm a little bit late with some of this stuff. You definitely have to protect them. There is, I do, I do have a confession with this green room and I had a bit of allotment rage. I came down here one day and my sweet corn was all over the place and I just took it all down. I'm glad there was no one here because they'd be like, what the, the heck is he doing? Honestly, I got into such a rage and I just destroyed the whole lot, chucked it on my composter. And you're probably saying to yourselves, Graham, what on earth did you do that for? And do you know what it is? that I've realised with allotment gardening some things you grow for the sake of it and some I don't know like sweet corn I'm not growing it again like it takes up so much room and it takes up so much time to grow 
and this time of year my mind has already shifted towards sort of autumn and winter gardening I don't know whether you feel the same but I just I wanted to use the space because I've got loads of cabbage and kale plants that I've grown from seed a couple of months ago and to me that's more important than sweet corn that I don't even know if it's going to harvest I mean I look around on the allotment plot some of the people have planted sweet corn and I'm sure my sweet corn harvested in August time last year and we're now into mid towards the end of September people haven't even got sweet corn on so I don't know anyway I took the ump and I just got rid of the whole lot and utilized it to put some winter veg in instead so coming down here this was where all my squash plants were and they'd kind of fizzled out and stopped producing so I created this vegetable frame out of this debris netting I'll put the link in the description to where I got it on Amazon it's not very expensive to be honest and I just found some old wood whacked it in the ground used some cable ties to tie the netting together you see like that and after a bit of hard work I managed to create this frame here of course you may be thinking well Graham how do I get into this well I've put a piece of wood along here and then I've got a wood upright where I've attached the netting to and look I've put a screw there to sort of hold it in place you see so you can just lean it over like that and open it up and then you can go in there and just I don't know crawl around and do some weeding I guess. The thing is so things are getting eaten in here so I've got that much red cabbage white cabbage and kale and sprout plants on the go that I'm kind of thinking that well if I get 50% of them to actually grow I'll still have way too much produce so I'm just going with that theory so I'm not not really too upset about the fact that things are getting eaten. That's why I'm not getting down about it because I've overplanted um, with that in mind. And maybe that's something that you know, if you're planting out stuff this time of year, probably want to plant way more than what you need because I tell you, it's going to get eaten. Here we are at the polytunnel, and this has been. I tell you, I've done some done some work in here since having all my troublesome tommies I've now taken all those plants out they weren't producing any more tomatoes in fact they kind of I don't know wilted away if you like me cucumbers were gone just they were still producing but some really small little cucumbers and I like to get ahead of the game here down the allotment and I like to get things in and up and running always like feel better when there's stuff on the go I don't like it when stuff sort of fizzling out um, so I've completely changed the way this polytunnel looks and uh, I know you're excited to see you so calm down um, let me do the zip and I'll show you here we go look anyone who goes camping will know that noise very well let's get ourselves in and look what we have in here and this is a marvel compared to what it was like before I'm really pleased about the way it looks if I stand back I might be able to show you a bit better but so the original setup of this polytunnel was I had this bed here the far one over there which had my cucumbers in and down the middle was one big bed where I had a couple of fruit trees which didn't really do that well though it did take up a lot of space um, and now what I've done is I've made it into a four bedder rather than a three bedder so I've really enhanced my growing space here and I'm really pleased actually it looks way bigger than what he did before when I just had the three beds and again I've planted some kale some black magic kale in here and I've got some spring onions growing either side of the kale on that I've got my Nespresso caps on there safety first in case I trip over and a cane goes straight through my eye out the back of my head with an espresso cap it'll probably just puncture my eye socket which is way better I guess here we've got 
purple cabbage again that I've put in and I've run this all the way down with spring onions either side. I've got white cabbage running up this row in the middle, spring onions and then over here we've got my curly kale and again I've got some spring onions but I ran out so I've only put them at the front here. The pests, I don't know what pests they are but they really like to have a go on the curly kale for some strange reason but check this out this is interesting I'm breaking into a sweat here's me thinking it's autumn really well warm right see this this is still coming through this horseradish look I keep pulling it out every time I come in here but I don't know it probably loves the loves the humidity in here it's just growing in parts over here as well look see so I think one thing I will do, once this stuff grows and we get, I don't know, I guess more towards January, February next year, I'm going to have a real go at trying to get this horseradish out of here. I may sort of go, I may try and dig it out and then put some cardboard down and some compost on top to really try and suppress it out because it's a real pain in the ass. this horseradish is. I didn't realise it was so evasive, um, but literally if I was to leave it, it force its way out the top of the God, camera. It force its way out the top of this polytunnel. I'm certain it is that such strong growing. It's really annoying, actually. I don't like it at all. I'm really unhappy about the old radish, if I'm honest with you. This allotment does bring me quite a lot of joy, and I do like to come down here a lot. So if I didn't have anything planted this time of year, kind of be a bit pointless, wouldn't it, really? So, because it does do good for my sort of noggin. Um, I've tried to plant as much stuff as I can that's going to carry me right the way through deep into the winter time, I guess. Oh, I'll show you the greenhouse. Why not? <sighs> Feeling generous. So inside the greenhouse here, I've planted some sprouts in pots, which I don't know, could argue they might not work out too well because the pots aren't too big. I've not grown sprouts successfully before. I've never really grown them, to be honest with you. I don't know as I really like them, but it'll be something that we can give away, perhaps near Christmas time. It'd be nice to give those sticks of sprouts away to friends and family, I guess. So take a look at them. They're actually doing really well in the greenhouse since I put them in. I'm having to keep them quite moist because this tends to go quite dry, but yeah, they seem to be really healthy in here. They're not getting eaten much, obviously being in the greenhouse, they're very well protected. But they are, I definitely think that these sprout plants are gonna come good for me as long as I can keep watering them and just keep one eye on them. So I think I should have three sprout plants, which you could argue is probably too too many i guess let me show you where i'm at with the peppers and the chilies come on so if we look at the peppers these plants are still flowering and they're producing very odd shaped peppers now nowhere near as much as they were before and um, they have slowed down obviously but it's still quite warm in this greenhouse to be honest with you and yeah just a quick note on the peppers i have found as well that picking them early really helps the plant grow and even though they're still green i've got i've put this cardboard box in my porch and i've chucked in a load of tomatoes that were green a load of peppers that are green um, and things seem to be changing color in this cardboard box which is great so and i didn't really think about that before that you can pick things off and then leave them to ripen up until you want to eat them but yeah just thought i'd share that because that's quite an interesting thing that I've learned is that definitely picking early is a much better option rather than trying to get big, extravagant looking produce. These are, these are starting to come on nice. I haven't really done anything with these chilies and you probably could argue they're not in the biggest of pots. Carolina Reaper, which, this, look, I'll show you there. I think I'm going to get at least a handful of chilies off those if I'm lucky. But yeah, let me just stand back and show you my chilies. So warm in here, but there's people outside, so I thought I'd come in here and carry on filming. I don't really know how long or what to expect with my chili plants, if I'm honest with you, because I've not grown them 
like this but I've not grown them before so I'm just going to leave them for as long as possible I think because it is warm in this greenhouse until the temperatures start really getting noticeably cold and then I, th I might bring them home put them on the windowsill not too sure yet let me know in the comments below um, if you guys, if anybody's growing chilies, knows a lot more about chilies than I do, which can't be that difficult because I know nothing about it. Um, what do I do with chili plants like this? Do I just keep them the way they are in the greenhouse? Do I need to do anything special with them? Um, yeah, be good to get people's advice on that. All my sweet corn, and I know some people might be raging at the fact that I've chopped it down, but you know, my allotment, my rules, it's pretty much where we are right now as we're coming towards the end of september um there's still a lot going on got my chilies there which are quite exciting um i hope you guys are still enjoying your allotment garden and haven't just shut up shop and gone home for autumn and winter um if you have that's fair but i don't blame you but i want to try and keep going all the way until the next growing season starts for Thank you very much for watching the video and if you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button. Have some of my other videos if you're new to the channel. I've got lots of videos of everything that I've done this year and last year when I really didn't have a clue what I'm doing. Um, I've learned quite a lot this year, I have to be honest, but yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.